So you're, you're the guy that people bring in to get, get into new ideas, get rid of the old dinosaur ideas about how things have been done for a hundred and plus years. That is exactly what I like to do. I yeah. am definitely have been that. It, that's been the centerpiece of my career success, being able to run, you know, reinvent things and kind of get break into new markets. Uh, as a matter of fact, I like to think of crash technology as the, uh, the oldest startup you've ever seen. Why would, why is it the oldest startup? Well, because it's it's like we're we're acting like we're a startup, you know. We really reinvigorated the company. We you know, doubled its size in you know five or so years. Yeah. And really, just uh, that was since we bought it as an employee-owned company, and we're just really just. I think we want to bang up job getting into new markets, and really having a more progressive approach to scaling up using uh, lean manufacturing techniques and stuff like that. CNC. There was, we really had practically no CNC grinding before I came here. So okay. we really kicked it up everywhere. So you said the thing that I think is so interesting, which is the employee owned, like uh, when you guys took it over, you bought it as an employee owned company. What does that look like? I mean, even from the ground up, right? I mean, how do the employees get together and decide that they want to buy the company? Well, the employees don't get together per se. It basically, the principal, somebody who owns a business, first they have to decide, do they want to sell it to the employees under this vehicle that you would call an ESOP, an employee stock ownership plan. Okay. So once they decide they want to sell it to the employees, they create this kind of shell. It's, it's imagine just for lack of a better way of saying it, it's like forming a 401k and the only company that they're going to own is the company that you're going to sell to the employees. Okay. So employees earn shares in that kind of what looks like a 401k. They get so many shares every year. So you, you basically do an IPO. Uh, in our case, we issued 100,000 shares on the IPO, but only in, then you amortize the distribution of the shares, you know, just for the lack of a better way of saying, you know, 4,000 shares a year for 25 years. So, you know, it's commensurate. You earn of the, each one of those 4,000 shares that are distributed every year an employee will earn that percentage of those shares commensurate with their pay. So if you make $10 an hour and the other guy makes $20 an hour, that guy that makes $20 an hour gets twice as many shares. So it's okay. commensurate with pay. All right. And how have you found that to energize the team? Well, you know, it's funny. I, a lot of, I write, talk, read about that this energizes teams a lot. Yeah, it definitely does. But the thing that it does more than all of that, it basically injects everyday employee into the uh, wealth appreciation game, whether they do it wittingly or unwittingly. You know, they're basically getting shares of a company, any company, if you know, you would go to work for any company, if they would just give you some shares of the company, some options or something, you know, whether or not you chose to work there to earn the shares or not, you know, you might have just signed on for the job to pay your rent and this and that. But, you know, if you're there for three, five years and the company goes from being worth $10 million to $20 million, it's unbelievable what ha starts happening along the way when I'm showing everybody their, you know, their certificates and what they're worth. It's like watching the stock market and watch your shares go up and up yeah. and up. And they look at it and they go, you know, is that... Is that real? Is that paper money? Is that real money? Or can I cash that in? Or what does that mean? You know, it's like this whole thing of uh, stocks is, uh, is very elusive for the everyday American to really get their head around and understand how powerful a vehicle uh, that is to wealth appreciation, to retiring, yeah. health, having wealth. And to be honest with you, I don't own stock. I don't own many stocks, right? I have 401k. I got stuff that was passed down from my grandfather, things like that, but I don't understand it. And I'm, I'm okay saying that. I don't understand it because it seems like it's play money, you know, that, that it, it fluctuates up and down at the whim of somebody. And I, I just don't get it. Um, and I think it would make more sense in a, in a bit, in a one business situation. Um, but I also know that just because a company made more money doesn't mean there's more money. <laughs> just because they made more money doesn't mean what? That there's more money. Oh, it that's doesn't mean it's there. Right. So, you know, uh, you could, you could put in a new garage, you could put in a new floor, you could put in all these things because the money came in and, you know, a lot of that gets missed by 
uh, employees and, and the team around you because they just think, you know, I'm working every day. I'm putting in my hours. I, I see that the, the company is profitable based on the numbers you're telling us. Where's the money? Do you guys go over that with the, with the employees as an ESOP and say, listen, we have to buy these things. We have to make these improvements. We have to do this stuff. Yes. Every month since the day I've been here, uh, we basically go over the financials, uh, gross profit, operating profit, uh, net income, operating income rather. And um, we also talk more than ever about EBITDA because, yep. you know, just for, in case somebody's watching by some chance, uh, maybe many know what EBITDA is, but earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So basically, if once you understand that acronym EBITDA, Basically, any business, anybody goes out to buy, first thing I would walk in and I would say, what's your EBITDA? I wouldn't care what you got for a building. I don't care what you got. I don't care about anything. Just tell me what your EBITDA is first. I want yeah. you to tell me what your EBITDA is first, just in general. That's the launching pad for basically the whole idea of buying a business. You know, okay. you have to know what they're making for earnings before all those, uh, you know, debt and depreciation, all those things. Yeah. So then the employees get it. Do, do they understand it more? Do they under, do they see where that money is going uh, into the business? Yeah, I, I think you just, the word you said that's very specific is they understand it more, right? So I look yeah. at the financials daily, weekly, monthly, all the time. I'm always buried in them some way or another. So, you know, I know them pretty fluidly, but so then I, just to say I'm telling them once a month doesn't mean that they can, you know, run through a balance sheet and all that. And then that they understand the whole equation, but they understand the yeah. basic tenets of uh, what I'm talking about. And ever more so when we talk about EBITDA and share price, EBITDA and share price, and they keep getting that. It's all about the profit that you make that makes the business valuable. Yeah. So what happens if, uh, and, and I'm just fascinated with this whole topic. What happens if somebody leaves the company? Do they keep those shares? Do they have to sell them back? Well, I, I could answer you narrowly for crafts, but it's generally true for most ESOPs. Uh, uh, let's just say you left, you were there for some number of years, say your shares are worth $100,000. Basically, we're obligated to buy those shares back from you. And we'd, we'd okay. buy them back in 20% increments for each of the success of five years. So we'd give you $20,000 a year for each of five years after you left. Okay. Pretty That's not so bad. No, it's, you don't want to give them everybody all everything at once. Cause then it drains the company of cash too readily. If like you have yeah. a group of people retire, uh, then the company has to borrow money. Yeah. That was my, that was my concern there. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, good arrangement uh, with an ESOP uh, to be able to pay employees out. By the way, you can also, there are ESOPs, you can elect to pay somebody in whole too, if they don't have too much, if they were only there for a year or so, you might just pay them a lump sum. So you do have okay. some flexibility in that too. 